Okay, welcome to the podcast that's kind of a continuation of the chemistry and numbers. And this thing right here probably plays uh, a bigger role in confusing students more than any other topic. And uh, unfortunately, it's a very important topic because, like I mentioned before, in chemistry, we're dealing with numbers all the time, and you've probably uh, seen significant figures in your math classes in the past, and so hopefully this is just a review. If it's not a review, um, then again, if you have questions, please ask me. So uh, when we're dealing with numbers, significant figures becomes a very, very big deal. And so you can see the definition. It's, it's, it's really just the number of decimal places uh, that we're looking to uh, give an answer to depending upon the the precision of whatever instrument we measure. And let me just give you a really quick example. So I'm going to draw a box here. And let's say we're going to do the surface area of this box. And it's 1.2 meters uh, times 3.1 meters. Um, that's uh, the dimensions. So if I was going to find the surface area, uh, I would times those two together. Uh, 3.1, and I would get uh, an answer of 3.72 meters, okay? Oh, pardon me, meters squared. Now, there's one slight problem with that, and that's the fact that in these two answers, I measured to the tenth of a meter, okay? But in my final answer, I've got a value that's to the hundredth of a meter, even though we did not make a measurement uh, that accurately. So we're kind of limited by uh, the device. And so we don't want to report more accuracy than what we really know the, uh, the values to. And so that's kind of the basis of all this. So really, I would have to uh, report this answer to be in 3.7 square meters. Okay? And so that's kind of the basis of all this significant figure stuff. And uh, so let me go over the rules. And again, I hope this is review. If it's not, it's okay. Um, but let's just look at how we approach numbers when we're dealing with significant figures. So here's the first one. Non-zero digits are always significant. So that's a pretty pretty straightforward rule. So if I have something like 1, 2, 3, okay, the answer there is three significant figures. Okay? Because <clears throat> if it's a non-zero digit, uh, it was measured, and that's an important digit. All right? So let's look at the second one. Zeros between non-zero digits are significant. Now, we call those captive zeros, so that would be a number like 305. So this right here is a captive zero, and those are always significant. Again, most of this, no problem so far. Well, now we get to the ones where it starts to cause a little bit of confusion. And this one seems to cause people a lot of confusion. Zeros in front of non-zero digits we call them leading zeros, are not significant. So, for example, that would be a number like this, 0 0.0251, right? <clears throat> now, a leading zero is that zero and that zero, okay? What happens is that students often think there's some kind of rule about zeros after a decimal place always count. But the easiest way to do this is just start counting from the left, and you don't count a significant figure until you run into a non-zero digit. So I would skip this one right here. I would skip this one right here, and I would go one, two, three. So that number right there has three significant figures. Right? And that's one of the rules that does tend to confuse people a little bit. Uh, but probably the biggest confusing one, I would say, tends to be this one. Okay. Zeros at the end of a number, we call them trailing zeros, are significant only when there's a decimal. So what kind of numbers are that? Well, let's say I've got 50.0 meters, and I've got 50 meters. Now, you might say to yourself, well, gosh, that's exactly the same value. But as far as data and measurements and chemistry, it's not. When I made this measurement right here, 50.0 meters, I had a ruler or a tape measure that measured to the tenth of a meter. And it was dead on. From here to that rock was 50.0 meters. I mean, it's very accurate. However, with this one, this is more of an estimate. Okay, I just said, well, from here to the tree is 50 meters. And I didn't really measure it. I just know that in the tens place, it's accurate. All right. So again, this is the rule that causes people problems because 
they start to go, oh, well, zeros after a decimal count, and it just becomes a big mess. And I'll show you when we start doing uh, some examples how it can be a problem. So then let's look at the last one. Exact values have an infinite number of significant figures. Okay, now what's an exact value? Well, something like, let's say that one foot equals 12 inches. Okay, that's an exact value. So I don't worry about going, well, this number has one significant figure and this has two. The answer is, is they have an infinite amount. And that'll become a bigger role when we start doing some conversions. All right? So hopefully this uh, kind of makes sense. Again, if you need to pause and rewind uh, or write this stuff down and slow things down, I'm going too fast, please do so. Because what I want to do now is I want to uh, give you an example. Okay? Or actually, I want you to do a little exercise here. I've got a number of uh, problems here. I want you to pause the video and write how many significant figures you think there are in each one of those. All right. Did you do it? I hope you did. So let's go ahead and look at this one. Okay, so we're over here. I've got, these are captive zeros right here. Okay, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this has seven significant figures. Why? Well, captive zeros are always significant. There's just one digit, so that has one. Let me get a different color other than blue. Okay, now look at this one. Okay, did you say three? I hope you did. Remember, these are leading zeros. You go from the left until you run into a non-zero digit. Then you count your significant figures. Again, there's no such rule that zeros after decimal count. All right? So that one has three. What about this one? Did you say seven? I hope you did. Captive zeros there. Trailing zeros. Trailing zeros only count when there is a decimal and there happens to be a decimal. So we have seven significant figures. What about this one? Hopefully you said one. All right? Trailing zeros, right? But look, there's no decimal. So that means it's just, you know, it's more an estimate. It weighs about 100 grams. Okay? This one right here, hopefully you said six. Captive zeros. Here's something looks odd. Look at this decimal at the end of a number. We're not used to seeing that. But in chemistry, you're going to see that every so often. Why in the world did they put a decimal there? Well, the reason they did is they wanted to tell you that they measured exactly to the ones place. Otherwise, they could have just wrote 200, all right? But since they put a decimal there, the measurer is telling you, I went to the ones place. So those are trailing zeros, and trailing zeros are only significant when there is a decimal, and there happens to be a decimal, okay? Look at this one. Is there a decimal? Yep, all these trailing zeros are, are significant. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, okay? Trailing zero, no decimal, one. Leading zeros, I go to the non-zero digit, and then a trailing zero. Does that, is that trailing zero significant? Well, let's look. Is there a decimal right there? Yep. All right. So that one has three. Hopefully that worked out for you. Okay. Again, if you have questions, just see me. We'll go over it. So let's look at the next thing, because now that we can count significant figures, we've got to do a little bit of math with them. And unfortunately, the rules are different, whether you're multiplying, dividing, versus uh adding and subtracting, right? When I'm multiplying and dividing, um, let's say, for example, I'm going to multiply 2.1 times 3.52, okay? Well, how many significant figures does this one have? This one has two significant figures, and this one has three, right? So I'm going to use my calculator uh, real quick here. I'm going to go 2.1 times 3.52, and my calculator says this. It says 5.6200, okay? Well, when you multiply and divide, okay, you can only go to uh, the number of significant figures as the one with the least number of significant figures, okay? So since the smallest number has, or since the one that has, uh, the value has two significant figures, I can only report to two significant figures, okay? So here's my first significant figure right here. Here's my second one. I'm count, cutting off right there. Now, since this is a two, uh, we're not going to round up. So my answer for this becomes 5.6, okay? So when you multiply and divide, you go to the least number of significant figures. So let's just go ahead and try another one. 
All right. Uh, so let's say I'm going to take uh, 25, and I'm going to divide that into uh, 1.291. Okay. So again, I'm going to use my calculator. I can't do that in my brain. Okay. And I, the answer I get here is 0 0.0516. Okay. Well, again, we've got to look at the values we start with. 25 has how many significant figures? Okay, the answer is 2. And this one has 4. Okay, so what can I report my answer to? I can only report my answer to, to two significant figures. So we've got some leading zeros, right? I don't count those. Two significant figures is the 5 and the 1. Now look what I'm counting, cut, uh, cutting off. I'm cutting off a 6. So I've got to round this number up. So my answer is going to be 0 0.052. Okay? That number has two significant figures. All right? Hopefully this is making a little sense. Now, to make this even more troubling, we've got uh, different rules when we add and subtract. All right? And probably the easiest, let, let, let's just, let me write out a, a simple problem here. Let's say I've got uh, 2.97, and I'm going to add that to 5.2. All right? All right, so if I were to add this up, uh, I've got 7 there, I've got 1 there, I've got 8. So the answer is 8.17. This is if I'm adding, okay? Well, if we were to use the last rule that we did, the the multiply and dividing, we would report to 2, which it turns out you, we're going to do that anyways. But the way uh, we do it when we subtract and add is we have to look at the place value. Okay, 5.2 does not have a value right here. We don't know what this number is. Okay, uh, It could be uh, anywhere between a 1 and a 4. The device that we use did not measure to the hundredths. So we don't know what that value is. So we can't report an answer. Now, so we're going to report to the place. We're going to report to the tenths place. And since this happens to be a 7, we're going to go 8.2. Right? So there's that. Let's try another one. Let's do a subtraction. Let's go um, 451.3 minus uh, 14. Okay? So I'm, gonna, I'm subtracting. So 3, uh, um, 4, carry out. Holy cow. Uh, 7, and then what was that? 4, 3. So 437.3. Okay? Now, with this, we've got to look to the place. Okay, we're adding and subtracting. I only have a value to the ones place here. Okay, so I can only report to the ones. So my answer is going to be 437. Okay, so with adding and subtracting, the rule is the least significant. Place. Okay. Different rules. I wish it wasn't that way, but uh, probably the easiest way to imagine that is if I'm timesing two numbers. Okay. Remember, if I'm multiplying, this this three affects both of those numbers, and that nine affects both of those numbers. So when you multiply and divide, it's different. But when we add and subtract, it's simply just place value. Okay, so that uh, is the way we, we do multiplying, and dividing, and addition and subtraction, and the rules are different. And unfortunately, it tends to confuse people, uh, but you just have to remember that. All right, so let's do some practice here. Take a moment, pause the video, and uh, see how you do. All right, so let's see how you did. So you added these three numbers, and when I, when I worked my calculator, I got, uh, let's see, 555.3623, all right? And then you look at the, now since we're adding, we've got to look to the least significant place. Well, we've got a value in the uh, ten thousands, a value in the ones, 
a value in the hundreds. I can only report a value to the tenths. All right, so that means I can only go right there. I've got a cut off right here. Now I'm cutting off a six, so I better round. So 55.4 is going to be the answer there. All right, on this next one, I, my calculator said uh, 1,038.1. Okay, so let's look over here and see what we've got. I've got a value to the, oops, that doesn't count. I've got a value to the tens, the ones, the ones. And the tens. My answer can only go to the tens. All right. That means I can only report an answer to that right there. All right. So, uh, and this is going to be a little weird because we haven't spent much time uh, rounding. But this is what your answer is going to be. Now that's an eight right there. So I've got to round up. So I would round this up to one thousand and forty. Okay. Notice this number has a value in the tens but not in the ones, okay? Now, some of you might want to go, well, I'm going to round that to 104. Well, the problem with that is you just butchered the value. You can't do that. You definitely can't uh, take off those numbers. And yeah, this does have three significant figures, but you know, if you're in charge of my bank account, I don't want you rounding like that, right? Okay, on to uh, the next one. Let's see. I get, when I divide, uh, multiply and divide those, I get 302... 0.99. All right. Now we're multiplying and dividing, so we go to the least number of significant figures. This one has three. This one has five. This one has three. So my answer can go to three significant figures. Now I'm going to cut off a nine. So what am I going to round this to? 303. Okay. I'm going to erase a little bit because I'm running out of room here. Okay. On to this next one. Multiply those two. Divide it. Okay. When I work that out in my calculator, I get. 2306.1284. Look at all those digits. Are they significant? Absolutely not. I've got four there, I've got two there, and I've got three there. My answer can only go to two significant figures. So that's going to be 2300. Okay? Again, just like up there. This only has two significant figures, right? Trailing zeros don't count unless there's a decimal. And again, you can't round that to just 23. That's butchering the value, right? Okay, here's a couple numbers in scientific notation, which, <coughs> excuse me, which we've played with uh, with our calculators. So I'm going to divide those two numbers, and my calculator says. Uh, 2.2891 times 10 to the fourth. Okay. Now with scientific notation, we only look at the numbers that are not past this times 10. Okay. So I've got 209. I've got that's got three. That has three. So my answer is going to be to um, 2.2. Nine times ten to the fourth. Okay, because I've got to use those three significant figures right there. Okay, and then let's do add these last ones. Let's see what you did. Okay, when I get this answer right here, I get two point six times ten to the fifteenth. Okay, now you're going. Wait a minute. I added those two numbers together, but what I want you to look at. Maybe you noticed this. Maybe you didn't. Look at that, to the 15th power and to the 3rd power. So really this number is 3,100, right? Okay. But this number, 2, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Look at how big that number is, all right? That's like Bill Gates. Well, no, he's not quite worth that much money, right? So this right here, okay, just as a little exercise, just kind of it. In math, if I add 3,100 to this amount of this larger number, it has no bearing on the value. Okay, it's kind of like if I was to offer Bill Gates a five dollar bill, would he take it? Absolutely not. Okay, so there you go, little significant figures again. Uh, hopefully, you've paused, you've rewind, you've written down stuff that's important, and uh, I'll see you in class. Hope this was a good one today.